Hi all. In this class, we are going to discuss about introduction to pharmaceutical analysis. So in this, we are going to cover definition, scope, different quantitative methods of pharmaceutical analysis. So what is pharmaceutical analysis? First of all, we will see the definition of pharmaceutical analysis. Pharmaceutical analysis is defined as a branch of chemistry which deals with resolution, separation, identification and determination of a given sample of medicine or pharmaceutical. And this technique used to identify and quantify any sample, compound or substance by using manual chemical instrumental methods. So that means by this pharmaceutical analytical methods we can qualitatively and quantitatively determine a sample using different methods like manual methods or chemical methods or by instrumental methods at the same time it is used to determine the composition of any sample so next is a classification of pharmaceutical analysis so as we discussed earlier pharmaceutical analysis can be broadly classified into two types of analysis one is qualitative analysis the other one is quantitative analysis so what is this qualitative analysis it means a completely unknown sample is taken and it is analyzed for the presence or absence of the particular substance so in qualitative analysis, we'll be able to know the presence or absence of any substance, but not the quantity. But in quantitative analysis, the determination of the quantity in number or weighed by any other measured parameter. And at the same time, the exact quantity of the sample is quantified, sorry, quantified in this method so the exact amount of the sample present will be able to find out using this quantitative analysis so next is the scope of pharmaceutical analysis so it is used to examine the raw materials then for the analysis of various drug samples for the qualitative or quantitative analysis of samples for the diagnosis of diseases by chemical analysis, for the determination of radioactive compounds, the determination of natural phytoconstituents, and finally, it is also used for the determination of different samples of water. Next, we will see in detail about quantitative analysis. So we already seen that quantitative analysis means we'll be able to quantify any sample. So for this, we can use different methods. So these are the methods used for quantitative analysis. So the first one is volumetric analysis. Second is gravimetric analysis. Next is instrumental methods, then microbiological methods, and finally, biological methods. So the first analytical method that we're going to discuss is volumetric methods, or we can say this is just the titrations. So in this method, it involves the measurement of volume and thus quantifies the component. So this method measures the volume of the solution of non-strength that should react completely with the material under investigation. So volumetric analysis method is nothing but the titrations. So the reagents used should fulfill the following requirements. First one is the reagents should react rapidly. The second is the reaction should be complete. Third is the completion of reaction should be detected by suitable methods. So the various titrations can be used for this. Some of the examples are acid-based titration, redox titration, 
complex symmetric titration and precipitation titrations. Next analytical method that we are going to discuss is instrumental methods. So in this method, the difference between the physicochemical properties of the standard compound and sample compound and the test is utilized for analysis. So we are going to compare a standard and a test or we can say a sample and any changes in the properties of the system are detected by measurement of current, potential, electrical conductivity, etc. using instruments. So in this method, we'll be using instruments to measure any of the parameters. So there are of mainly two instrumental methods that is spectroscopic methods and electrochemical methods. Under spectroscopic methods, we use colorimetry, UV visible spectroscopy, IR spectroscopy, NMR spectroscopy, mass spectrometry, etc. Under electrochemical methods, we can see there is conductometry and potentiometry. The next method is microbiological method. In this method, the therapeutic efficiency of antibiotic is determined. The bacterial growth inhibition by the antibiotics to be analyzed is measured. And the last method is biological method. So under this biological method, bioassays are used. So in bioassays are concerned with the determination of potency of drugs and all its preparations. So we have discussed already different methods, quantitative methods used in pharmaceutical analysis. And now we will see what is a primary standard and a secondary standard that is used in pharmaceutical analysis. So first of all, primary standard. So primary standards are highly pure reagents or we can say chemicals used to prepare a standard solution which doesn't require further standardization and they are chemical reagents having high percentage purity highly stable high molecular weight and readily soluble in solvents so now we will see what are the requirements what are the requirements needed for a ideal for primary standard First one is it should be highly pure and it should be easy to obtain. Next requirement is the total amount of impurities should not exceed 0 0.01 to 0 0.2% that is it is 99.99% pure. The next requirement is it should not be hygroscopic that means it should not absorb the moisture oxidized and affected by air. The next is it should have high molecular weight so that the weighing errors will be negligible. Next requirement is it should be readily soluble in solvents. Next is the titration errors should be negligible or easy to determine accurately by an experiment. So these are the main requirements for a primary standard and you should always remember a primary standard is highly pure reagent and it does not require standardization. Now we will see some of the examples of primary standard used in many titrations. So here some of the examples of primary standards used in acid based titration that is sodium carbonate, oxalic acid, potassium hydrogen phthalate and benzoic acid. In redox titration, we can use primary standards like potassium dichromate, potassium bromate and potassium iodate. In precipitation titration, we can use silver nitrate, sodium chloride, potassium chloride, potassium bromide, etc. Next is secondary standard. So what is secondary standard? A secondary standard is a less stable compound which is used for the standardization and its concentration is determined by comparing with a 
primary standard so the secondary standard uh, it's not really pure compared with primary standard and it requires a standardization and it is standardized by comparing with a primary standard so standardization of a secondary standard solution should be done before quantitative analysis of pharmaceuticals so in order to determine that we use the formula n1 v1 is equal to n2 v2 so these are the sum of the examples of secondary standard used in many titrations so first one is in acid based titration secondary standards used are hydrochloric acid sulfuric acid sodium hydroxide etc in redox titration we use potassium permanganate ceric ammonium sulfate sodium thiosulfate etc in precipitation titration we use ammonium thiocyanate potassium thiocyanate and in complexometry we use edta so next is what is a standard solution a standard solution is a solution of accurately known strength so if we know the concentration of a particular solution we can name it as a standard solution next is what is standardization when a reagent is not available in a pure form that is a secondary standard a solution of approximately non normality of primary standard is prepared and then it is titrated against the standard solution this process is known as standardization so that's all about this today's topic thank you